This week's video is something special and a little bit unexpected for me. See, I went to Nashville, Tennessee recently for an event and was only supposed to be in and out. However, two of my girlfriends, Jenny Bauer, who is a custom engraver out of Michigan, and Ann Briggs, who you should know by now, were in Nashville for a chair making course with the renowned chair maker, Greg Pennington. I wasn't able to extend my trip to stay the entire week like them, but I was able to stay an extra day to build a perch. Greg had a beautiful piece of sassafras. Sassafras. <laughs> I love that word. I've never heard of that wood before this project. And then walnut for my legs. We started off at the lathe, turning the spindles for the legs and the stretchers. I've only turned a handful of times, so Greg gave me a rundown by making one part, then I tried my best to replicate it twice more. While I was working on my perch, Jenny was starting her build, which is gonna be a continuous armchair. And then Anne started hers, which is a miniature continuous armchair. She's taken a few classes with Greg previously and has already built a few full scale chairs. Once I had my spindles turned, I moved to the main work area and joined the ladies on the shave horses where I could start adding facets to my spindles. Mm, Greg has such a neat setup here. Neat is actually an understatement. He has the best shop I've ever set foot in so far. It's one of those spaces where you can walk in and you don't wanna leave. He built the entire thing himself over the course of a summer by ordering a trailer full of trees, milling them up, and now he gives classes on building a wide variety of chairs. One chair I absolutely loved in Greg's shop is called the Democratic Chair. It caught my eye because instead of smooth turned surfaces, every part is faceted, and the overall completed look is stunning in my opinion. So I asked Greg if I could do the perch with the Democrat twist. This meant taking each spindle and cutting in eight flat sides on them with the spoke shape. With those done, next I moved on to the seat. It's that sassafras seat. We first started out by drilling holes that the legs will later be inserted into. And this is so cool. These holes are drilled at a compound angle and Greg has come up with this genius way of making sure the drill is caught correctly where he's made two stands that holds lasers. These lasers can be set to the needed angles. Then once lined up to the hole properly, it creates crosshairs which you can watch as you're punching the hole. Mm, tell me that's not cool. With the holes drilled, Greg showed me another cool tool that cuts the end of the tenon on the spindle to the exact size and angle needed for the hole in the seat. It's basically an oversized pencil sharpener. Then it was back inside to ream out the drilled holes in the seat to the perfect angle and size as well. This is done with the two laser setup again so that you know you're maintaining the right compound angle. Next was to start carving the seat, which was by far my favorite part of the entire process. It's just so neat watching the shape take place. My love for sassafras did wane a tad bit here because it turns out, even green, it is pretty darn hard. So I was really giving my forearms a workout. I used a large assortment of Greg's tools and a lot of them being brand new tools to me. Then slowly but surely, I started getting a seat shape. I honestly didn't mind the time it took though. I was not only enjoying learning all the new tools and technique from Greg, but also the constant chatting and laughing with Ann and Jenny as they were making progress on their own chairs. That is the great thing about making things with only hand tools. We can all work in the same room, oftentimes on the same bench, and also be talking. Jenny was on the same bench as me, working on her own seat, doing great, especially considering this was a little bit out of her comfort zone as she focuses on being a custom engraver and not a woodworker. As I mentioned earlier, she is a fabulous hand engraver who takes all sorts of custom items and puts them on a new level with her artwork. In fact, she did a hand plane for Greg and actually got to use it during the making of her own chair. And then Anne, her miniature is so fun. You might think it's less work because of its size, but it isn't. All of the same steps are still required. It's just a different scale. If you don't know, Anne has a farm and a ton of animals and she cannot wait to put one of her baby rabbits in her adorable chair. Although I personally think a chicken would look cute in it too. I will tell you this much, whether you are as experienced as Anne, intermediate like me, or sort of new like Jenny, this is a wonderful class to take and shop to be in. 
Greg teaches people from the ground up if needed and checks in to make sure you'll come away with the treasure. It was not only relaxing and so fun, but I was learning things left and right. Little tricks that to me are little gold nuggets. Ugh, love good tricks like that. <laughs> Yeah, put on this bevel, got my swoops in, shape the body, so that's the seat. With the seat done, I was on to drilling holes in the legs for the stretchers. This was a little bit of a nerve wracking step, hence my look of concentration, but it did go off without a hitch. Full speed, full speed. When it came time to drill a hole in the spindle, Greg set up this really genius jig to hold the spindle as well as utilize mirrors to make sure the drill was going in straight. That man is so awesome. So now it was time for assembly, but I only had about two hours before I had to jet off to the airport and fly back to Texas. So Greg suggested we only glue up two legs to a stretcher, dry fit the rest, and that way I could flat pack it enough for me to carry on to the plane. So that's what we did. I applied high glue, which is able to be cleaned up with water, but is also reversible should you ever need to take a piece of furniture apart and repair it or refinish it. Then everything else was a simple dry fit. So now all you have to do is sit in it. You can sit in it, but it's a little, oh, no. a little uncomfortable. <laughs> this allowed us to not only see the stool complete, but also allowed me to cut in the wedge slots in each one of the tenons, as well as level out the feet which meant finding a flat surface, marking each leg, and trimming off the excess. And now that it was as done as we could get it, we all took turns sitting in it. Oh, it is comfortable. Oh, thanks. Thank you. I approve. <laughs> Thank you. Greg helped me wrap up the parts to be a flat pack. Then I tucked it under my arm and went off to the airport. If you want an interesting conversation starter, just towed a stool around the airport. TSA had a few questions for me, but I got home just fine. Once there, I was able to unpackage it and then glue the wedges into the top of the legs. And this is really interesting to me because the leg itself isn't glued into the hole. That's just a really snug fit. This wedge is actually the holding power. When driven in, it spreads the tendon out to expand in the hole even further and keep it in place. After letting the glue set up for a bit, I came back to trim the excess off flush with the seat. Then last thing is applying a finish. Let's start with the walnut because I love watching it come to life. All right, and now sassafras. For a blonde wood, it sure is pretty. It has such an interesting smell to it. When carving it, I was having trouble putting a name to the smell, but Greg nailed it when he said spicy. It smells spicy. Such a unique aroma. Yeah. Very spicy. Too bad we can't put that. Did you say spicy? Yeah, you're right. Oof, and I love the combination of it with walnut. What do y'all think? I plan to keep it as a shop stool. I love it so much, I'm thinking I need to start a hand tool collection so that I can make a few more. There is something so satisfying and relaxing cutting in the facets on the spindle and also carving out that seat. I would also love to run through the process again before I forget everything I learned. I plan on going back to Greg's to build a complete chair and I just might have to build one of those faceted democratic chairs. Jenny doesn't make videos, but you can find her and her work over on Instagram. Engravers are even more of an endangered species than woodworkers, so go support her if you need something engraved. Anne obviously does make YouTube videos and actually published one on her experience, so check the description for a link to that. Then if you've been wanting to learn how to make a chair but find the process intimidating, I cannot recommend Greg's classes enough. I actually have to put a number to Who that. Who likes Jeez. to measure? Yeah, there's your center. Oh! Well, I can make it. I like me now. He is a phenomenal person and an outstanding teacher. I have a link to his upcoming class schedule down below if you'd like to check that out. All right, that's it for this one. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you on my next one.